hi guys welcome back to kitchen colony let's make some jamaican saltfish and i hope you have been enjoying what i've been presenting to you so far and on this channel i try to find creative ways in which we can prepare and enjoy the meals that we're so accustomed to i try to do that so that it suits different palates but it is still yummy and still tasty and a quick and easy way to do it also. I'd like to thank my subscribers and my viewers for supporting my channel. It is really appreciated. Lately, I'm not too sure what I'm getting for selfish because I'm sure it's not cod because the texture is not the same. Neither is the taste. And lately I bought a packet of selfish and I was surprised when I put it in the water, it started curling and it was stretchy and it wasn't selfish. And I had to throw it out. Now, I have decided that I will no longer be buying saltfish because I need to know what I'm eating and I'll be making my own saltfish. This I've done a few times before, but this is going to be permanent. If you'd like to see how I do mine, then continue watching. To start off with, you need a nice fish. Cod is good, haddock, pollock are good fish because they have some fat content. So, they, it absorbs the salt better and it makes the fish not too dry when there's a little fat in it. Now for the salting, I'm using some pink Himalayan salt and some sea salt. I wanted the coarse one but I only had the fine one. But you can use regular table salt, it doesn't matter. To begin we're going to mix both salt together. For the Himalayan. Now we're going to mix them both together. And this is what we're going to use to salt our fish. And the salt dries out the fish and gets rid of all the moisture, so you need a, enough salt to do that. Now it's time to set up our container. You need a very large container to hold the fish. If you can't get a big one, then cut your fish in small pieces. Next thing, I'm going to use a peach stuff. Paper, brown paper. I took a paper bag and I folded it. If not, you can use newspaper. And the next thing, on top of that, I'm going to add a towel, dish towel. Now this will absorb the liquid from the fish. Now the next thing we do, we're creating a bed for the fish to lie on. So we're going to create a nice salt bed so that our fish will have the salt to lay on. Yeah, like that. So I'm going to place my first piece of fish down. Then I'm going to sprinkle some more salt on top of the fish. Remember the salt is to draw out all liquid from this fish and it is curing it and killing any bacteria that's in the way. On top of this I'm going to lay another piece and I'm going to pour salt on this piece also. Now you could cut them much smaller than this Making sure that the fish has enough salt on top and on the bottom. And for my last piece, I'm going to place the fish right on top also. And I'm doing the same, sprinkling some more salt. Don't worry about the amount because we need this fish is very thick and I need this amount of salt to cure it. You may use any other type of fish to make saltfish. Snapper is a good one and some others. But remember, if you're going to use fish, make sure the fat content is over 70 grams. The thing I'm going to do is place another tea towel on top to secure, to pull moisture also. Covering it, covering the fish. The last thing, we're going to place something flat 
and then we're going to place something to squeeze to help push the moisture out so i'm going to use some um items i found in my cupboard i'm using this very large <laughs> tin of mango and i'm using a jar of some preserve and i think that is heavy enough to push out and you're gonna just place it on your counter for about two to three days test it every day to see if your fish is firm because you'll feel when it's done you'll feel when all the water is gone because the fish becomes very firm and not as soft as you put it in now it's three days later and it's time to check our fish get ready for drying so we're going to move the weight I had it on my counter all this time. No smell because remember, the salt preserve. Wow, and it is firm. And this is what you're looking for, firm. It's not yet cured, finished. It's, it's not finished yet. So we're gonna put it to dry and I'm gonna transfer this to a basket. Now for those who are experiencing the sunny weather now, this is perfect. You take it outside and you leave it, you know, for, um, for about two days. You, you just want to dry out any moisture that is still left in the fish. Now you may save the salt for another time. Just dry it and save it for another time. Now if you have, if it's sunny where you're at, you leave it for two days in the sun. If not, you can put it in an oven, but a very low, low, low heat, low as you can get. And you leave it for, not to cook it, but to dry out the moisture. If you have a dehydrator, you'll always set in for about an hour. Whatever method you use to dry your fish, make sure all the moisture is gone. If not, then you'll have your fish going bad after a few weeks because it will start to rot and then you'll start to smell it. Now here you have it, our homemade salt fish. Old time taste and the old time texture that I'm accustomed to. Flavorful and not like the cardboard tasting ones that you buy in the supermarket. Trust me, if you can, try it. Thank you for watching my video. And if you have not yet subscribed, please remember to do so. And if you've enjoyed this video, then please remember to give me a thumbs up as this helps to promote my video to others. And also it helps to grow my channel. Thank you very much again for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.